Hi everybody, so you might have noticed a bit of a theme with these things going on, bellows. That's because I think they're, um, well, much maligned and people just think of them as something to uh, start your fire or run a forge, but they can be incredibly easy to construct, require next to nothing in the way of tolerances, and are useful across a whole range of things. I mean, so far, we've made a pump out of this, we've made a generator out of it. And what we're going to do is take two of them and make a motor. So we have two sets of bellows, and you'll notice they're closed at one end and open at the other, and that's obviously to let the air in and out. So these two bellows will be fixed to each other, and then what I've got is a couple of end plates, again with openings for them. The end plates go on there, and those openings take a little air import, which is basically just a jar where I've drilled a hole in it. That jar fits in there, and we've got a little bit of pipe, and that fits in there, and that's how we're going to make the connection to the air hose. Between these two, we've got another board with two holes in them, and that will go directly in the middle like that. And those two holes are for rods, so the rods will go in as guide rods between the end plates. So those bellows will slide up and down, pushing those guide rods in and out as they move. Oh, it's in a frame. Now I'm going to too much detail, because to be honest, I think it's really quite obvious. All I've really done is glue on a couple of end panels here and here. The bellow sets are connected here, this centerpiece, which has no connection between the two bellows. And then we put runner rods on that centerpiece, so as I pull that handle, the bellows alternatively fill and empty. It does chuck out a surprising amount of air, actually. Now we're going to use this valve, and to make this valve chest, what I've done is I've taken some acrylic block. I mean, you know where I got this acrylic from. It's from the back of LCD screens that were disassembled in previous videos. And I've cut three blocks at 10 by 10. Then I've marked it out and drilled right the way through and bolted them together so that these three blocks will always be in the same registration. You can see what I've done. I bolted the whole thing together, as I said. I've marked it up. I took a hole saw to make the circle that I actually want. And then here I've got a line in the center. So we've got the line in the center and then the two at 45 degrees, making 90 degree angle for that whole thing. We're going to use 12 millimeter ports. So when the ports are drilled through, that's what they'll actually be like. Now, one of these plates is the port inlet plate and outlet plate. This is the actual valve and then there's a backing plate. Now this one, which is the valve, uh, we know because it's got the circle, would only have two of these holes drilled. The plate that makes the actual inlet and outlet will have all three. So now we've got that done and we've bothered to sand all this down so it's nice and even with each other, we need to take it apart. And of course I've put a line on there to tell me how that thing actually goes. So I'm going to unscrew it, reverse it and drill the holes through. Okay, so we took that one away and then we drilled those through and marked that one, took that away and drilled that through. So that's your front cover plate with its three port holes and we're going to stick that 12mm pipe in there and that will make our port. So that's the front plate done. And this plate, you can see where we scribed the circle, so we need, now need to drill out that entire circle. You'll notice that I only drilled through two port holes because they line up like that as the as the circle swings so we need those two portholes this one actually is an exhaust and what we'll do is we'll trim that out at an arc like that because it will exhaust around the circle and out the top the other thing we need is a bearing this is a skater bearing it's eight millimeters thick the acrylics nine millimeters and the skater bearing will go in the center like that this is the rear plate and the rear plate is all finished. So let's get on and do those. Okay, so there's the back plate, that's the chest. Now we've cut out the center hole and you can see that the center disc, I've cut that out to 22 mil, put a skater bearing in it, that's gonna go in there. And there's the front part of the chest with its three holes in. And then those three port entry pipes go in there like that. So now we can assemble everything, check it. And then we need to be able to cut this around here to allow the gas to escape on the exhaust and then we're finished. So I've fixed the central piece and the back piece together. There's the bits with the ports in there and there is the valve wheel that has been shaped with its um, bearing in the middle. So now all I've got to do is put that together and see where it fits. Now it's going to waggle that little bit there and as these actually are exhaust ports anywhere along there can get chopped off to expose that uh, little section which is going to be the section that connects to the piston <coughs> rod. So that's the valve finished. 
That is the air inlet port and these two go to the piston. So when the valve's in that position, these two are joined up. This one exhausts out through there. So the valve, the piston will be pushed up with the other side exhausting out there. Now there's gonna be a little knocker on that piston um, shaft and that will knock it in that position so that now these two are joined up and that exhausts. So that's how we're going to actually make that piston work. So we're gonna use that valve right there. So this will have a push rod on it operating the valve and then we should be able to use this either on um, ordinary air supply or in a vacuum. But it's really got quite a lot of blow. I'm quite pleased with that. So what I've got to do now is fix the valves, add in the tubes and we're ready to run it. Okay, to test this while it was there, I just connected it up to the vacuum cleaner and I was working the valve by hand. To be honest, it's absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to turn the vacuum cleaner on, apologise for the noise, and we're going to run this a little bit by hand before we put the push rod in. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? <laughs> okay, let's face it, this is just a little bit wacky and a little bit of fun. I mean, it's not going to power anything magnificent anytime soon, but I thought it was just so Heath Robinson it had to be done, really. And there it is, all together with its valve connected, and uh, we'll turn on the vacuum cleaner and we'll see this thing running. So that valve, I think, is pretty interesting in itself. I mean, it's clear it could be used for a compressed air engine, a steam engine, a vacuum engine, probably a whole host of Stirling engines. It could be easily adapted and made. Now, I've showed how to actually make it by hand from sheet materials, but I've also done uh, a Tinkercad version, which, of course, I've put on Thingiverse, and that Thingiverse link is in the description if you want that valve alone, just to play with the valve and see what else you can do with it. But Bella and really really adaptable and perhaps you should give them a bit more attention than we've been giving them this one is quite strong the one in the engine obviously had quite a weak action so that we could run it very easily and we didn't get much in the way of this spring action that happens with thicker materials so there's lots of adaptability in a set of bellows that will enable you to construct a whole host of things really with the minimum of tool set and that I think is awesome all by itself. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.